the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome as we gather to worship on this sixth Sunday of Epiphany. Our worship this morning is being held on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and I wish to acknowledge them as traditional owners. I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders past and present and emerging. God our maker, you call us here to worship you together to bear witness to your creativity seen, heard and found in all who gather. We are all your children, bearing your divine image, shaped by your imagination and breath. You have gifted us with the beauty of difference, the blessing of diversity, the pleasure of individuality and the bond of love and peace. Let us pray. We come from scattered lives to this place, seeking unity in the Spirit, seeking the grace of the Christ of all people, seeking the peace of the God of all. God's people have gathered in our glorious diversity and difference as God created and attended. We worship God together. Amen. And we sing to God's praise, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
gifts are greatest when they are multiplied. The musical prodigy that works hard on his own but can share his song to uplift the spirits of others. The scientist who commits herself to a cure to heal others' disease. That Christmas bonus that allows us to give to more end-of-year charitable drives. The sense of humour that makes another person laugh. Sometimes we misunderstand what it means to be gifted or blessed. We isolate ourselves or others for what we do not have in common rather than what various gifts we can share when we are ready. In what ways do people of our church community feel pressure to have it all figured out before they serve, to understand or accept the Bible before they learn, or to feel joyful and grateful before they worship? We think of Jesus as being the perfect healer. But do we ever think of his need for others, his need to share God's love, his need to teach good news, his need to shine light on the lives of the outcast and create more welcoming communities? Jesus speaks a new world into being, challenges the world's difficult definitions of the facts of life and depicts a new reality called God's kingdom. Because of Jesus, Christians have a quarrel with the world's definitions of reality. As disciples of Jesus, we are to align our lives with a new reality that Jesus calls into being. The Beatitudes show us how in Jesus' mind we are blessed both for what we are and are not, for what we have and will receive. So let us consider how your blessings and giftedness are a call to be connected to others. Let us pray. God of all, you alone are worthy of praise from every mouth in every nation and time. You created the world in your infinite grace and by your everlasting love redeemed it. Hold us to the shared task of loving one another as you have loved us. Merciful God, you made us in your image, with minds to know you, with hearts to love you, with wills to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant and immature, and our obedience incomplete and self-serving. Help us today by day grow in your likeness, which is so widely displayed in the diversity of creation. Help us to understand our own prejudices and narrow-mindedness. Help us to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Help us to serve others with humility and gratitude. Do not hold our sin against us, but help us to repent of outdated and inappropriate worldviews. Help us to mature in our thinking, loving and serving. Amen. God's trust is in you. God is worthy of your trust. You are the tree that God plants next to the stream. So send out your roots and drink of the living water that God has provided. 
Amen. And as we prepare to listen for a word from God today, let us pray. Triune God, you are our giver, our gift and our power to give. Be with us now as we unwrap the wonder of your word and seek to be a blessing to the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Our reading this morning is from Jeremiah 17, verses 5 to 10. The prophet contrasts those who trust in the Lord with those who trust in mere humans. Reading from verse 5, Trust, says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in parched places of the wilderness, an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. And our Gospel reading this morning is from Luke chapter 1, verses 7 to 26. Jesus heals and then preaches, preaching a sermon about the nature of God. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, then the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The word of God, God's word for God's world. Have you ever been on a Ferris wheel? I'm scared of them, but they fascinate me. You know how they work? You wait for an empty car to come along and you get on and the wheel moves forward one space. Then another car is emptied and refilled and the wheel moves on another space until the riders are all new And then the wheel turns around a few times before stopping. Then you get off in the same way you got on, one car at a time, stop, go, stop, go. 
But at the top, you can see the sky and the roofs of buildings. You can feel the swaying motion of the car and the butterflies in your stomach. Then you end up on the ground again, all safe and sound. Barbara Brown Taylor, an American theologian, uses this image of the Ferris wheel to illustrate the passage from today's reading from Luke's Gospel. You may ask what Ferris wheels have to do with the Beatitudes. But if you think about it, actually a great deal. First though, it's important to remember that the Beatitudes are not about one group of people always being blessed and about one group being filled with woe. They are about blessings and woes we all experience from time to time. They are about the ways in which we respond to these ups and downs and how they impact upon our relationship with God. Addressed to the first disciples and through them to all of us, the Beatitudes are not about us and them. They are about us and the whole of our lives. So back to the image of the Ferris wheel. Obviously at any time there is always someone at the top looking at the blue sky and feeling on top of the world. There are always others who at that point where they feel that they are hanging on the edge of the world, wondering if there is actually anything supporting the car which is now rocking back and forth. Then there are still others who are nearing the bottom and all they can see are the lollipapers and the sticks and the soft drink cans and the spent tickets. Our lives are like that ride on the Ferris wheel. Sometimes we're on top of the world, able to see great distances. We're happy and we have a feeling that this is why we took this ride. Then there are times when we're not quite sure if the Ferris wheel will fall apart and we hang on for dear life. We just close our eyes, take a deep breath and trust that when we open them, we will be at a more stable place in our journey. And at other times, we are frustrated and all that we can see is the litter from other people's joy. And we think, this can't be any more frustrating or difficult. Then, the car you're in starts up the other side again. And we can see more joy and hope in life. Common wisdom and indeed some parts of the Bible seem to support the view that misfortune is God's punishment for sin and that success is God's reward. In fact, some use this kind of theology as an excuse for not helping the poor, for example, because their poverty is God's punishment. They may help the poor even if they blame them for their situation. But they see no reason to work to eradicate poverty. People who have been experiencing misfortune look for its cause in their own behaviour, which sometimes it is. If, for example, they didn't look before they crossed the street and were hit by a car. But sometimes there is no reason then again, some people run across the street all the time without looking, I don't advocate that, and are never even close to being hit. Life is much more complicated than simple cause and effect. I don't believe in a God who punishes people or their children because of their sin but rather believe that in all the situations of our lives, at all the stops on the Ferris wheel, 
we can experience God's grace and God's blessing. We need to see these things in our lives, good and bad, for what they are rather than blaming God or becoming paralysed by guilt or blaming the unfortunate. As always, Jesus wants his hearers to set conventional wisdom aside and look at their God in fresh and new ways. Ways which free them rather than ways that bind them to a past that cannot be changed. Today, we are asked to look at the life of blessing in non-traditional ways. Maybe we're not into theme parks or Ferris wheel rides. Maybe you'd rather gather or walk in the bush or go fishing by the river. The prophet Jeremiah uses the image of a tree planted by the water whose roots go deep into the soil. A deeply rooted tree can always find the water of blessing even when the streams of obvious blessing dries up. A tree, or any plant for that matter, that experiences times of drought is forced to send the roots deeper in search of the waters of life. Of course, I'd rather be blessed. I'd rather not experience sadness or stress. Of course, I'd rather be blessed with good health and healthy friends and relatives. Of course, I'd rather have food in my cupboards. But the good news is that even then, God would be blessing me. Sometimes, when we're experiencing showers of blessing, we are fooled into thinking that these behaviours are a reward for our good behaviour. Or that God likes us more than someone else. Or that we are hard working and smart and deserve all these blessings. Well, if we are blessed in this way, and that's all we think about, that is in and of itself the blessing. But if we have to work at it to see the blessing, if we have to reach and stretch our roots in order to reach the life-giving waters, faced with going to the doctor after doctor for answers, we can come to realise that life is still blessed because we may only have the energy to focus on what is most important. We may find that in opening ourselves to the blessing that is a little or a great deal harder to find, that there is more blessing than we could ever have imagined. The reality is we're always offered God's blessing. The reality also is that we're sometimes too poor or sick or stressed to see it. The reality also is that we are sometimes too rich, too well, or too self-satisfied to see it. When we are successful and healthy in human terms, all too often we forget that God's grace and blessing are a part of our lives. It's not that whatever doesn't kill you make you stronger. It's that God is with us at all times to bless us. Yet there is a call in our blessing to be a blessing to others. We are not blessed for our own sakes. Anyone who has travelled to communities in the developing world can tell you about their generosity they will literally give you all the food they have in the house and do so with genuine joy. They will literally give you the shirt off their own back. They do so, I believe, because they know that their joy comes from relationships and not from material things, even though these things are sometimes essential for life. It's not that the rich aren't blessed, but it's that the richness 
is not the blessing from God. It's that the poor are blessed, but that the poverty is not a sign of God's disapproval or curse. These passages call us all, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are well or sick, whether we are successful or struggling, whether we are popular or shunned, to look to the God of blessing for strength, for the way and meaning in life. For it is in our relationship with God and with the world God loves that true blessing can be found. To God's name be all the praise and the glory. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. Christ has been raised, therefore we do not fear being stuck. We are raised with Christ, therefore we do not fear death. Let us not destroy what we love nor do, what we hate. Let us not perish in the futility of our sins and doubts. Let us live like a people resurrected. For Christ has been raised from the dead. Love's power conquers death's power over us all. We sing, make me a channel of your peace. Let us pray. God, our maker, in whose image and likeness each of us has been created with a human dignity worthy of respect. Listen to the cry that rises from every corner of this fragile earth, from our human family to world leaders and decision makers. Grant the wisdom to reach beyond boundary and border. May our common humanity drive policy and foster peaceful dialogue and constructive collaboration. To those who misuse their power, 
or take power from others through violent action or hateful speech. Grant mercy and grow in them a humble heart of compassion, peaceful dialogue and constructive collaboration. To the innocent ones robbed of dignity, possession or shelter. To the victims of these forces who have had life taken from them, we entrust them in your everlasting arms. O oh God, that are wide enough to embrace all of your creation. And with Jesus we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We sing, Lord, let me see, see more and more.
whether we have blessings or woes, each calls us into becoming more fully like Christ. Each of you has a gift to give and a blessing to receive. Let us live in the full expression of what it means to be blessed in a world God created and blessed. So go, blessed and be blessed. And may Almighty God bless you, the Creator, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in Christ's name. Amen.